They call it the Grand Meadow Plan. That's near Grand Meadow, Minnesota, in Maurer County. NFO members there put together three and a quarter million bushels of grain for sale in a block. And they did it in less than three weeks. Maurer County had asked for NFO organizer Lee Elliott, so he and Jack Cruz made the scene. The news media got interested in the project, and they called it the Grand Meadow Plan. Here's Jack Cruz about to interview the Minnesota NFO member Bob Steer. We're going to ask him uh, how this came about. You know, one of the best places to start is the banker. He, he's the guy that knows all these farmers around here, and he knows their conditions. And the banker says, yeah, yeah, you betcha, you betcha. These, and on top of that, he said, our help will all be to that meeting. So they understand, too, what, what, your goal, what you're trying to do and your goals are. So from there on, we went right down the street to every business, and absolutely, every one of them said, sure enough, we got plenty of time. Helicopters were flying in from the cities. We had, I think, six or seven TVs and all the radio stations around in the last two weeks. We've put together over three and a quarter million bushels of grain. We got Marty Steer, and uh, he's been out. He's signed up quite a bit of this grain himself. And I think a lot of the springboard uh, from this whole area comes from these young men. We ask him what kind of prices they are looking for for their grain. We tell them, okay, what price you want, just put it down on paper here and we'll, we're going to try and we're going to work for that price. We, we've got to get together, block it together, put the price on it that we want, we're going we're gonna to get it. Put together right around three million bushels in the Mower County Dodge area here. There's more and more farmers out there looking for help every day. When we go out and talk to the farmers, we're saying, uh, you name the quantity, you put down the quantity you want to sell, the price that you want, the gross price at your farm. For once, we're saying, let's get a price at our farm gate. We've talked about it for years. We've never done it. Here's a chance. We put the freight on it. They go to Winona River Terminal or wherever they wish to go. And then we say, tell us how long you want us to work on this. How long do you want us to try to get a price? They put the time. If we would get a decent price for our commodities, all our other problems would fade away. Here again, it's farmer working with farmer trying to get a price. And it's being it's very successful in this area. We think it'll be successful wherever it's tried. Jack Cruz in the country, reporting on a project that promises to be an example for lots more like it. Blocking grain together for NFO collective bargaining. We have Eugene Young on the phone at Morrison, Minnesota. He has a very satisfying account to give of his experience with forward contracting in NFO's hog program. Delivery period number eight, that was the 6th to the 20th of April. That was a live buy deliverable to the St. Cloud collection point. I sold a contract for 49 cents, and the day that I delivered it was 41 cents. <laughs> hey, that's great. That is. So you were $8 above the market, weren't you? Right, but I think the interesting Brown thing, or the most important point here when you look at it, is that I actually locked in a profit because on my farming operation I needed 48.30. That was pricing my corn out at three dollars and twelve dollars soy. I and see. of course I got a low point, and if you look at it, we were at about the low point because I priced my corn into these hogs at 260 and the soybean meal at nine. So actually, I had a production cost of 45. I see. And, uh, but I think the important thing to remember here is that I actually figured my cost of production, and by looking at the five-year average, I came out with a 4301, and the all-time high for the last five years was 49.93. So I, I, it made it real easy for me to make a good decision, a good marketing decision here. That's very impressive as an experience with, with forward contracting. You want to know what's even more impressive? I sold five contracts uh, this year so far. And I, I contracted 51% of my hogs, and I averaged 46.91 on every hog that I sold by blending these contracts in with my regular cash market. If I wouldn't have sold on them, if I'd have stuck with the cash market and wouldn't have contracted, I'd average 44.24. <laughs> so this year, That's it, great. it was an extra six dollars per hog on 329 heads. So it's just about two thousand dollars more in my pocket by using this program. NFO people and you first sat down and talked about this. Did you understand that the whole scenario, so to speak, that this is a, a long-term plan where you're going to play it this way? Yes, I, I've gotten good information from them, and it's just a lot of work on their part, and 
and myself taking the time down to sit down and really study this thing out and think about it. it it's worked out really well. I think once a farmer realizes what his cost of production is or what he has to have for what he's got to sell, uh, then the rest of it comes easy. That was Eugene Young of Morrison, Minnesota. Another thing we could point out about his success story is that he was selling above the market all during a period when there was a nationwide buildup in hog numbers, which had a downward effect on prices, but not downward for Eugene Young, who planned ahead through the National Farmers Organization. Collective bargaining for feeder cattle has gained a foothold in Oklahoma. We have Dwayne Hodgson on the phone. He's the state NFO bargainer for grain and livestock in Oklahoma. He's telling me how it got started. It's been relatively new here in Oklahoma, but uh, we started here probably about 18 months to two years ago. The collective bargaining concept has really caught on in this area. That's great. You know, what they like about it is they're able to negotiate a price before they sell their cattle. And, uh, Good. You know, they feel that they're uh, associated with uh, professional livestock uh, people that is trying to uh, help them sell their production rather than buying it. Can you give me some idea of the size of the operation and the growth that you've had? In Planning on double the production here in Oklahoma this year, and uh, I don't have the exact figures, but we contracted, you know, somewhere around four to 5,000 cattle last uh, spring uh, coming off of this wheat and off the grass. I see. And you plan to double that this year? Yes. Most of our feeder cattle are sold, uh, well, you know, they're fairly... Uh, big operators here, you know, having three to four hundred head at a time, and, and they're just loaded just in, in truckload lots and uh, shipped out of the way. What are some of the advantages in collective bargaining under NFO and feeder cattle? Well, I think the, the main thing is probably your insurance, especially on your co-cow program. Uh, you have your trust protected checks. Uh, you're able to price and agree on the price of your cattle before they are sold. You're able to put together a, a loads of cattle, a, a bigger block of cattle that is more attractive. You can voice your opinion in the organization of, uh, you know, what you would like for the organization to do. You have your country fresh cattle. Uh, the cattle are fresh. You don't have a, the health problem that you normally have with cattle coming out of auctions or that type of uh, cattle that you receive. And that's one of the advantages that you folks in the southwest there can really uh, push too, isn't it? Yes, sir, it sure is. Because you have ranch fresh cattle in a, in a high dry area, huh? Right, yes, sir. This was a phone conversation with Dwayne Hodgson, Oklahoma State Bargainer for NFO in grain and livestock. He reported on a good healthy start in feeder cattle bargaining, begun only 18 months ago in Oklahoma. Now here's Ted Strait of the Dairy Department. He has an update report on progress in collective bargaining through National Farmers. The National Farmers Organization's Dairy Department has been experiencing some good growth. Through the months of October of 1984 through February of 85, we had the total reports in. The New England area has put on a total of 89,800 pounds of milk, which is daily production. The Northeast has put on 44 shippers, or 75,000 pounds of milk per day. The Midwest, which is Wisconsin, has put on 115 new shippers, or 140,000 pounds of milk per day. Great Lakes Gulf, which is Ohio and Michigan area, 43 new shippers, or 50,000 pounds of milk a day. The Central area, which is Illinois and Kansas and Missouri, has put on approximately 11,000 pounds of milk a day. And the upper Midwest, which was Minnesota, has put on a little over 30,000 pounds of milk a day. Now, in the Midwest, which is the Wisconsin area, reports have come in that they have almost doubled that amount of production in one month of March and part of the month of April coming onto the truck, which is not included in those figures. The same stands for the upper Midwest area. There are 50-some new shippers that come on the truck in the month of April already. Total them all up, the National Farmers Organization program has grown to the point of an additional 263 new shippers through February, or approximately 400,000 pounds of milk a day. Now remember, in the month of March and April, we have almost doubled that production. So it shows that it has become a popular thing to do. 
It also shows that people are ready to do something about the farm crisis situation. So let's get out there and see them and then roll more onto the truck. John Conley is one of the rising country music stars. He's going to do a benefit concert for emergency relief for agriculture. It will be Sunday afternoon, June 2nd at Omaha. My pairs are all due and the babies need shoes, but I'm busted. Cutting this down to a quarter of a pound and I'm busted. Here on the phone now with John Conley. I'm asking you, John, about your music. We've had success with songs like Common Man and uh, our current single, Working Man, uh, Friday Night Blues, uh, Busted, all of which uh, deal with uh, the problems of everyday living. They certainly do. I was raised on a farm, of course, and we still operate that family farm in Kentucky, uh, about 250 acres up there. And uh, very, uh, you know, that's a full-time farm operation with, uh, with a hog operation and uh, tobacco and uh, and, a, and a cattle herd as well, so. I bet you have some long, long thoughts about the situation that agriculture is in now. The farm situation has, in the last few months, I guess, received a, a good bit of attention on a national level from the media as, as you know, the, the fact that it's in trouble. Right. But I can remember when, when uh, various times when our farm, our family operation, uh, you know, when my dad had to consider whether it was worth staying or not, if, if it could even, uh, if it could ever work out. Your decision to do a number of benefit concerts for agriculture is very impressive to me. What brought you to that decision? Well, as I say, it's been a, it's been a concern of mine for a long time. And what I noticed is that back when the farm uh, legislation uh, was, uh, you know, going through and uh, they were waiting on the president to to yay or nay it, right. uh, yeah. all the networks covered the thing for about 10 days there, or two weeks, every day, every night. That's right. And then uh, once the bill was uh, vetoed and everything, uh, you know, we'd, we never heard anything any more about it. And yet the problem goes on. And what I wanted to do was do anything I could to once again refocus on this and let people know that, hey, that the problem didn't go away and it isn't going away until it's addressed. John Connolly's benefit concert at Omaha will be at the Municipal Auditorium Sunday afternoon, June 2nd at 2.30. Single admission tickets are $10. Hear a great country music concert and help build agriculture's defense fund. I'm Phil Allen for Here's Info. And that for today is something to think about. This was your NFO informational tape for county meetings during the month of May. Compiled and edited by Don Mack, director of the NFO Broadcast Division. I'm Phil Allen, and that, for May, is something to think about.